Hello friends, uh, let's have a look to your last chapter and last module at Transmission Line. First of all, giving you a brief about this chapter. In this chapter guys, you'll be learning only two types. One will be the problem based on transmission line. That will be a numeric pro problem. Second will be a problem based on SMET chart. That will be a second phase of this chapter. We'll have a look what do you mean by SMET chart and how to draw a SMET chart, my dear friends. Okay. So before that guys, let's have a look at the transmission line. A basic problems, what we need to do it. It's very simple. We'll be taking only three problems guys. Trust me, in examination, you'll be getting this sums among this three chart. Three sums, that's it. I'll be taking only three major sums in transmission line of constant of transmission line. So just practice this three sums. It will be more than sufficient for your examination and to clear your concepts. Before starting this sum, trust me, the calculation is very easy. Don't look at the bigger number 10 to to minus 6, minus 9, plus 6. Don't get afraid of it. It's very simple, but I'll make it very easy. Uh, even you'll be taught how to use a calculator for solving this type of problems. And last, the most important thing, you need to keep that in mind. You don't need to forget to write the unit of each and every parameter. That is very, very important. So being a monitor, being an examiner, I will definitely reduce your marks. So your unit has to be there. That is must necessary. So let's have a look guys. Very simple. Let's start. When I talk about transmission line, my dear friends, I have a question, question given as the constant of a transmission line, the register is given by this. L, your inductor is given by 2.2 milli. Milli, that means this will be your 10 to to minus 3. G is your conductance. It's given as 0 0.25 to 10 to minus 6 more. Inverse of resistance. So in resistance you have ohms. Conductance you get more. C is your capacitor. So that's farads. 0 0.005 10 to minus 6 farads per kilometer. Determine the characteristic impedance. The characteristic impedance, my dear friends, is given by Z0. Next is your propagation constant. Your propagation constant, my dear friends, is given by gamma. Next, you have an attenuation constant. The attenuation constant is given by alpha. Next, you have a phase constant. It is given by beta. So I need to find Z0, gamma, alpha, beta at 1 kilohertz. So hertz, that means this is nothing but my frequency. It is given kilo, that means it will be 10 to 3. So beyond finding this, I'll be finding more two variables. Like if it is given to find lambda, that is nothing but your wavelength. And if it is asked to find the phase velocity, that is nothing but VP. So we will be also be finding velocity and wavelength as well as the sum. So let's have a look guys step by step how to find all these parameters. Basic parameters just need to remember the basic formulas. Just put the values for the same. Okay. I hope you are having a calculator right now. Because you need a calculator while solving this kind of sums. Okay. Sure. So let's go for the sec. Starting for the sum. So let's start with the impedance my dear friend. My impedance Z is equal to R plus G omega L. Your R is your resistance, L is your inductor. And the formula is omega, guys, you guys, you guys already know it. Omega is nothing but equal to 2 pi f. So let's put the values for R, F, L. So the value for R was 6, F was 1 kilohertz, the value for L was 2.2 to 10 to minus 3. So let's simplify it. If you observe it carefully, the real part is only 1. When I say imaginary part, any value which is adjacent to J, that is your imaginary value. So the real value is 6, it will be plus J. Simplify this in your calculator, my dear friends. So you get bracket 2 pi into 10 raised to 3 bracket close into 2.2 into 10 raised to minus 3 bracket close. So the value which you get is 13.82. So put the value over here is 13.82. The value which you got is your rectangular form. I need also the polar form. To convert into polar form, so let's convert it. So for that, 
you need to put your calculator into a complex mode by pressing 2. So type the value, the value which you got is 6 plus 13.82 and the imaginary sign is after the imaginary term that is i. So this is the value which you got in rectangular form. Convert into polar form by pressing shift and plus sign. So you get R and theta. So press equal to. So you get the value for R that is 15.06 and shift and equal to you get the value for theta. Over here you will be seeing an angle over here. Okay. This angle sign teaches you and tells you this value belongs to theta. Okay. Again if you want to see the value for R again plus shift and equal to so you got the value for r okay so let's write the value for r my dear friend this is 15.06 angle the theta which you got is 65.53 since the z is your impedance so impedance unit is ohm since it is given as per kilometer so it has been given as ohms per kilometer so that's your value for z that's your impedance so z wasn't being asked in the question the question was to find the characteristic impedance that was z naught to find z naught i need z i need y y is my admittance so let's find the value for y my dear friends so for the value for y will be similar to z z was given as r plus g omega l so for y in spite of r it will be g g in spite of l it will be c so put the value of g omega is 2 pi f so put the value of f c it is given 0 0.005 10 to minus 6 now simplify this value my dear friends you have only one real part so note it down directly 0 0.25 10 to minus 6 that's your real part plus j simplify this two bracket to get the value for imaginary part so bracket 2 shift and pi into 10 to 3 bracket close bracket 0 0.005 into 10 to minus 6 bracket close so the value which you get is 3.14 into 10 to minus 5 it's 3.14 10 to minus 5 so value which you got is your rectangular form i need to convert into polar form so for converting media into polar form i need my mode to be in complex so press mode press to complex so your real part is 0 0.25 10 raised to minus 6 bracket close plus bracket so it is 3.14 into 10 raised to minus 5 bracket close since it is emerging part so press i while writing you need to write j before the imaginary term in calculator you write after your imaginary term so that is not j it is in terms of i so don't be confused about it okay after writing it i need to convert into polar form so for converting it to polar form i need to press shift plus sign so you will get r and theta now press equal to the value which you get is your r so for getting theta you have to press shift and equal to you get theta so by r the value which you got is 3.14 10 is to minus 5 angle so value for theta shift and equal to which you got is 89.54 so it is y it is admittance inverse of impedance the unit is more it is given as per kilometer so after finding z that was the impedance after finding y that was the admittance now you will be able to find the characteristic impedance so that's the reason i had to find z impedance y admittance to find out the value for characteristic impedance the characteristic impedance my dear friend it is given as z naught so your z naught is equal to under root z upon y your z is your admittance y is your impedance so put the value of z and y and simplify to get the value for z naught so let's do it my dear friends the value for z which you got is 15.06 angle 65.53 divide by the value for y which you got is 3.14 10 to minus 5 angle 
89.54 so let's find the value for z naught if you have a under root my dear friend after putting the value for z and y so now you will be learning how to take the root of this complex form that is very very important there's something new about it which we have already done it couple circuit in DC circuits so let's revise it once again guys okay so if you have an under root and you have a polar values okay so what you need to do it you cannot put everything in calculator if you put everything in calculator you will be getting a math error okay so you have to dip, solve part by part so let's see what is the solving part keep the under root as it is since both are in polar form divide the only the real part only the real part, not the angle part, only the real part. If we divide the real part as 15.06 divided by bracket 3.14 into 10 raised to minus 5 bracket close. So the value which you get is 4796117.83. Now the after division of the real part, now you need to subtract the angle upper angle minus lower angle so the value will be 65.53 minus 89.54 so the value which you get is minus 24.01 so now i need to get the value for z naught to get the value for z naught my dear friends now you cannot put this value as well in the calculator you will get a math error so what is the shortcut my dear friends if you have a polar form and you take a root so what you need to do it the real part you have to take a root and the angle you have to divide by 2 real part you have to take the root and the angle you have to divide by 2 that is the way a shortcut method in which you can take a root of a polar form so take the root for real part root bracket 4796117.83 bracket close so the root which you got is 692.5 the value and the angle that is whichever angle which you got my dear friends you have to divide by 2 so the angle which you got is minus 24.01 it's divided by 2 so the value which you got is minus 12.005 so that's the value for z naught which you got after simplification the value from z and y so the value for z naught is 692.5 angle minus 12.005 the value after getting the value of z naught put the unit as ohms that's your impedance now after finding the characteristic impedance my dear friend that's your first point which you had to do it now let's go for the second type and the second question which has been asked that is your provocation constant your provocation constant my dear friends is given as gamma again your provocation constant depends on your impedance and your admittance so after finding the impedance and admittance you will be using the formula gamma is equal to under root z into y for z naught the formula was z upon y and the provocation constant the formula is z into y so that is the difference my dear friends so please remember for z naught z upon y for gamma z into y so please don't interchange the formulas that you'll make a blunder for it okay so now put the values for z and y the value for z was 15.06 angle 65.53 into and the value for y is 3.14 10 raised to minus 5 angle 89.54 so if you have two polar form and in multiplication okay so what you need to do it you have to multiply the real part okay so multiply the real part so bracket 15.06 bracket close bracket again 3.14 into 10 raised to minus 5 bracket close so value which you get is after multiplication is 4.72 10 raised to minus 4 since both the polar form and multiplication form you need to add the value if it would be in division subtract the angle multiplication and the angle so the angle will be 65.53 plus 89.54 so it will be 
0.07. So now, after getting the value for gamma, you have an under root and you have one polar form. So what is the procedure? Take the under root of the real part and the angle is divided by the two. So that is the only way where you can get the root of this polar form. Okay. So take the under root of real part, under root bracket 4.72 into 10 raised to minus 4 bracket close. The value which you got is 0 0.021 bracket and the angle value is divide by 2. 155.07 divide by 2 you get as 77.53. This is the value which you got as your gamma, your propagation constant is per kilometer. So the value which you got is your in polar form. So to find the value for alpha and beta, I need this value into a rectangular form. So let's convert it into a rectangular form. For converting into a rectangular form, my dear friends, I need to be in complex mode. So the value which I got is 0 0.021 shift and angle. And the value which I got angle is 77.53. So this is my polar form. I need to convert into a rectangular form. To converting into a rectangular form, my friends, I need to press shift and minus sign. So you'll be getting A plus B I. So press equal to. So that's your real part for the rectangular form. So put down the value. So your gamma will be equal to 4.53, 10 raised to minus 3. And shift and equal to, this, this value which you got is J, 0 0.020. The real part which you got is nothing but your alpha and the imaginary part which you got is nothing but your beta. So this part is known as your attenuation constant and this part is known as your phase constant. To get alpha and beta, that's the reason I had to convert gamma value of polar into rectangular value. Unless until if we don't convert your polar to rectangular, my dear friends, you won't be getting the value for alpha and beta and alpha is nothing but attenuation constant and beta is your phase constant so let's put the value for alpha and beta separately so your alpha will be 4.53 into 10 raised to minus 3 the unit is nepper per kilometer and the beta value is 0 0.20 the unit again when i talk about alpha it is never per kilometer. When I talk about beta, that is nothing but radians per kilometer. So it is nothing but radians per kilometer. So after getting the, all the four values, my dear friends, Z0, that is characteristic impedance, gamma, propagation constant, alpha, attenuation constant, beta, phase constant. Now let's find more two values if asked, that is your wavelength and your phase velocity. Your wavelength lambda is given as 2 pi upon beta. So put the value, so 2 pi is your constant. The value for beta which you got is 0 0.20. So divide bracket 2 pi, bracket close, divide 0 0.020. The value which you get of lambda is 314.15. The unit is kilometer because everything is in kilometers which is given to you. So after finding the wavelength, if it is asked in question that you have to find the phase velocity as well. So the concept and the procedure for the phase velocity would be omega upon beta. So let's put the value for omega and beta. Your omega is 2 pi f my dear friends and the frequency value is given to you. The frequency is 1 kilohertz, so to 1 into 10 to 3. And the value for beta is given to you, that is only about 0 0.20. So that's divided bracket 2 pi into 10 to 3 divided by 0 0.020. And the value which you get is 314159.26. Again, the value VP is since everything is kilometer. It is kilometers per second. So that's for the logic guys which we have studied in this sum. We learned how to find out your impedance.
from registered and inductor. We learn how to find out your admittance from conductance and capacitor. We learn how to find out the characteristic impedance that is Z0 from impedance and admittance. We learn how to find propagation constant gamma from admittance and impedance. We learn how to find out alpha and beta, alpha and beta from propagation constant where alpha was the real part and the beta was the imaginary part. Where alpha is tamed as attenuation constant and beta is known as a phase constant. After that we also learn how to find out the wavelength. The wavelength can be given as given as 2 pi upon beta that is a phase constant right. So what is the value of 2 pi beta? We also learn how to find out the phase velocity that is nothing but Vp that was given as omega upon beta. So after putting all the values, all the calculation, please don't forget to write the unit for each and every terms. That is D must. Okay. Let's have one more example, something different, where we need to find some different values. So that will be a thorough practice for this topic. Thank you so much, guys. Signing off.